Lord, we thank you that we live in America. We're thankful for the freedom we have. Lord, not only in our country, but in our hearts, our spirits, as we know you as our Lord and Savior. And we thank you, God. We thank you. We praise you for it this morning. And we just open this service with giving honor to you in your precious and most wonderful name. And everyone said, unless you're a veteran, you can sit down. Anybody who's a veteran, stay standing. If you've served in the military in some way or a first responder, please stay standing. We want to honor these two guys this morning. We appreciate you. I, you know, we have not said the Pledge of Allegiance in a church service since I don't know when. This morning, I had the brainstorm and praise God that Dixie found it and got it up there. They're wanting to take part of it out and it's two words uh, under God and we don't want that so this morning let's say the pledges of allegiance and as we say it let's put our hands over our heart that's the way I was taught in school anyway if you want to stand back up let's do but I am thankful for our veterans I thank you for our men and women who who serve and put their life on the line every day in fact there's some that today are putting on their life on the line so that we can stand here and have service and, and say this pledge. So let's say it together. Are you ready? I pledge, pledge the allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Praise God. You may be seated. We want to show you a short video before we start the service. Uh, in honor of our veterans. Uh, you may know somebody or have someone in your family who's a veteran. I know several of you have lost a spouse that's, that was in the military of some kind. And we appreciate uh, the fact that years ago they served, and I appreciate the ones served today. And so we, we have short video, just, just, I guess, our way of saying thank you. They come in all colors, ages, and genders. They come from all walks of life. They deliver our mail, teach in our schools, repair our cars, coach our children's little league teams. They are the fabric of America. They are the faces of freedom. They are veterans. Some served in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard. Some served as pilots, mechanics, soldiers, medics, or cooks. Some volunteered, others were drafted. Some served in times of war, others in times of peace. Much was asked of them, and great was their sacrifice. We are proud of the men and women who defended our nation's freedom. They are our veterans. We are thankful. Amen. Amen. Thankful for our men and women who serve our country. We're going to sing some patriotic songs today and songs about freedom. So let's just enter in and just enjoy uh, the freedom we have as we sing. America the Beautiful. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his America, America, 
God mend thy every flaw, confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. Oh, beautiful for heroes in liberating strife, who never get old, do they? It's great. Praise God. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Lift your eyes to heaven. There is freedom. Lift your eyes to heaven. There is freedom. Freedom reigns in this place. Showers of mercy and grace. Falling on every face, there is freedom. Freedom reigns in this place. Showers of mercy and grace. Falling on every face, there is freedom. If you're tired and you're thirsty, there is freedom. If you're tired and you're thirsty, there is freedom. Give your all to Jesus. There is freedom. Give your all to Jesus. There is freedom. Think about the words as you're singing them. Jesus reigns in this place, showers of mercy and grace, falling on every face, there is freedom. Jesus reigns in this place, showers of mercy and grace, falling on every face, there is freedom. Freedom reigns in this place, showers of mercy and grace, falling on every face, there is freedom. Freedom reigns in this place, showers of mercy and grace, falling on every face, there is freedom. There is freedom, there is freedom. Can you just thank 
thank him for your freedom this morning. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you reign in this place. And we are free. Lord, we are thankful for our freedom in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Through you, the blind will see. Through you, the mute will sing. Through you, the dead will rise. Through you, all hearts will praise. Through you, the darkness flees. Through you, my heart screams, I am free. And I am free.
As we just come into your presence this morning, we are, we are so thankful that you are here, so mindful that your presence is here. God, we just praise your name. This morning as we continue worship, our prayer team is going to come and they'll be down here around the front. If you need prayer for anything, any reason this morning, come down and just join them. They will agree with you and pray with you, anoint you with oil, and they will just pray the prayer of faith over you. So as we sing that, you feel free to come. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence all the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the rush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power. And His grace, I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This morning we are so thankful as we, we bring several names to you that I'm aware of today and there may be more. Lord, I, I pray for Leon and Dolores who's home. Somehow Leon has hurt his foot and we just will pray for our his hip, excuse me. And they were all ready to go this morning and he could hardly get out of bed. So we're gonna pray for him this morning. Uh, Donald text me earlier and he said that uh, just got out of the hospital didn't know if he'd be here this morning pray for our concert on Friday that souls would be touched people would just receive the Lord and, and just be encouraged if one person comes and says Jesus be the savior of my life it's worth it all if one person is encouraged it's worth it all if one person is touched by the power of the Holy Spirit it's worth it all my cousin Diane just lost her husband, Howard, uh, or excuse me, Harvey. Howard was one that was a few years ago. This is the second person that just lost him and talked to her on the phone. And she said, one thing I, I know about you, Jim, your church is a praying church. I said, you got that right. We know how to pray. And I'm thankful for that. And you had one. Yes. If you didn't hear that, she's inviting you to come to the front. If you have a need and you need prayer, whether, whatever it is, that as you come forward in prayer and faith, that as you come, it's your testimony for what God is going to do in your life. Am I saying that right, Donna? That's pretty close. And so this morning, as we pray, if that's you, the very reason that they come and stand in the front is 
is to pray for you and to, to be part of your life. That's what the body does. That's what we do together collectively as a body. And so if that's you this morning, just come on down and, and just the prayer of faith and just allow God to do that. And then that'll be the testimony of your faith. Lord, we, we do come to you this morning and I pray if there's anyone here that needs a touch that God, they will respond. And Lord, whatever causes us or keeps us from, from moving out in faith, God, I, I ask you that you would help us to leave those fears aside or those thoughts aside and God in faith believing that you would, you would do the work that needs to be done. We pray for Leon and Dolores this morning that you will touch Leon. We thank you for already ministering to Dolores through this week and, and she's back on top and doing better, much better. And we thank you for that. And God, we, we pray for Donald who just got out of the hospital and just needs a touch this morning that you will minister to him. God, I pray for Diane who's, who's lost uh, a husband that she loved dearly. And they, God, I, I just thank you that that your comfort can just surround us. Your comfort of the Holy Spirit is like a blanket that just surrounds us and warms us. We thank you for that. We pray this, this Friday for our Terry McAllen concert, Lord. We're seeing a lot of response, Lord. I pray for those who come. First of all, that, that your spirit would just be here and touch lives. And if there's anyone that comes Friday night that does not know you, that somehow through the music and the, the anointed uh, ability of Terry, God, that you would just touch lives. Second of all, I pray that we'd be encouraged and praise would just emanate from this place, that we would just raise a roof with, with, with your praise and worship and adoration. We thank you for that. We praise you for that. We'll give you the glory. God, I, I'm so thankful for Mary Lou here this morning. Even with her foot still sore, she's down up front taking her place. Uh, this is her ministry. And such a prayer where she is. I, I ask you to bless her today. I thank you for her. I just ask you to be with her in a special way. In your precious name. Amen and amen and amen. Okay. Bonnie is having some, some dizzy spell. Lord, I just lift Bonnie to you right now that you will just bring a calm to this dizziness, Lord. Lord, the, it's just, we just come against it in your name. God, we come against it in the name of Jesus, the name above all names. God, we ask you to, to give her freedom from this dizziness this morning, that you would be back up and around and, and that we would see her tonight. But Lord, we just... We just thank you for it right now. We, we praise you for the answer in all these requests right now. And we'll give you the glory in your precious name. In your precious name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This morning we're going to sing an, another song. And while we're doing that, Everett and Joe are going to come. And they are going to pass out communion. I'm going to ask you to hold it until everybody is served. And then we will have communion together. And so this morning. Hear the sound of heaven. It's the sound of many waters. It's the sound of worship coming from the throne. Cries of adoration has made from every nation. Lift their voice to make his glory known. Singing, holy, holy, holy are you. Lord. Just worshiping this morning. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels bow to redeem to worship you now. Holy, holy.
verses the girl singing again. Hear the sound of heaven, it's the sound of many waters, it's the sound of worship coming from the throne. Cries of adoration as men from every nation lift their voice to make his glory known. Singing, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you. All right. As you take, as you have the emblems in your hand, this morning I just kind of felt led that if, if you're here and you need your healing, you need a touch from God. As you take communion, God can do that's. That is one of the main reasons we have communion. It represents not only the blood that was shed for us on Calvary, it represents the healing power of God in your life. It represents what God can do in your life. So this morning as as we partake, the bread represents the body that was beaten for our healing body that just unmercifully beaten for our body. Forty stripes killed most men and Jesus took 39 and then went on to carry the cross and to to be on the cross. And by his precious blood, we have salvation. I've asked Ryler if he would pray over both emblems this morning. And he's got something very precious in his hands. So I'll bring the microphone to him. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for sending your son, Jesus. And Jesus, we thank you for being willing to make yourself of no reputation, but upon yourself the form of a servant became in the likeness of man. And being in fashion as a man, you humbled yourself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And therefore, Lord, because we want to remember your sacrifice, not take it for granted, God, we just pray over these elements that you told us to take in remembrance of you. For the bread that represents your body that was bruised, striped, and beaten, and torn for our sins. A body that was thrashed for our healing. Because yes. nothing that you did wrong, but for our forgiveness and our healing, God. We thank you for that. And most importantly, Lord, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that wasn't spilt, but shed upon the cross because you willingly allowed yourself to be crucified so that the blood of Jesus could purge all sins because without the blood, there is no remission. And we thank you so much, God, for the precious blood represented by the wine or the grape juice this morning. And God, we just pray the blessings over each of these. And I pray, God, that if there be anybody sick in their body or anybody that needs salvation in their souls, may they receive that, God, as we take the two elements, Lord, that represent both. We thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Should we take the bread and partake together? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's take the cup and participate as well.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise your name. Praise God. Praise God. Church, may we never just take this out of tradition, but may we take this to remember the sacrifice and the love we have for our Savior as he truly loved us enough to give his life on a cruel cross. We thank you for that. Amen. We've got a lot we're doing this morning. Robin's probably thinking, he's forgot the kids, he's forgot the kids. No, I haven't. I think sometimes we do our kids a misjustice by not allowing them to be part of a communion service because then when they come to become adults, you know, they go, wow, what's all this about? So this morning I kind of rearranged, this is BGMC, and we are going to take a BGMC offering uh, before we dismiss the kids, and so we are going to do that, but I just, you know, I like to have the kids as part of our worship uh, because they, they get to sit in with us, and by the way, they watch us adults, they watch us big kids and how we worship. So uh, we are the model, we are the example. So I just kind of throw that out there, uh, you know, for you to think about. Oh, so kids, come on up here, come on up here. Grab a barrel, and if you have any of your loose change, be ready, because they're gonna come around. And this is, uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is maybe new to you. Every first Sunday of the month, we take a BGMC offering and it goes to Convoy of Hope. They have done so much for us, and we thank them very much for what they're doing. Uh, and so everybody has, we have these little barrels. If you want to take a barrel home, by the way, uh, and fill it with change, and then bring it back the first Sunday, they're, they're right here, they're up here, and so today they just pop off. You can put your money in that way, or uh, if you have so much change you can't get it in there, or those $100 bills that are hard to get through that little slot. You can just open up the top. But uh, One time we did this and one of our kids said, Pastor, make sure you tell them we take checks and $100 bills. <laughs> okay, I've just made sure. we. But we appreciate our kids. And we appreciate what uh, Convoy of Hope is doing for our communities. Not just our community, but all over. Uh, and so... Okay, you guys, good job. Anybody else with, oh, right over there. Oh, you wanted to say something. All right, do you want to come up here and say it into the microphone? I didn't think you would, but. Uh, oh, we have to have this on. We, we, I don't know what happened to the, oh. This is too good, because people out there, I mean, that watch us, we have an average of about 150, 160 people who watch us during the month, and we want, they, they want to hear this. If you could see their heads, they'd be nodding, yes. Yeah. So when we started here a year ago, everybody knows Carson's lungs were really bad, and the church had prayed for him. Well, we went in December, and they said that his asthma was controlled, and then Jeremy took him on Friday, and he passed his breathing test. They said his lungs were stronger than most five-year-olds now. Wow. And, and they also took, they took down one of his medications, so it's one less medication he has to take now. Wow, and that's pretty good. And they Thank said you. that if he continues to improve, that we will reduce his actual like asthma steroid inhaler as well. In case, so we in go you know, back this, in December. This little guy right here. Yeah. <laughs> So prayers are working for him. Our, this is our resident cowboy. He's not decked out. He's in kind of sandals this morning. You know, usually it's boots and a buckle. But anyway, we love you, bud. All right, kids, you're dismissed this morning. Thank you. Thank you. And we appreciate. I wanted to explain. She's in plastic this morning. I thought she was a surgeon or... Well, we're having a special guest today back there. Oh. Uh, a, a, a chef. And he's going to be teaching are you us serious? how to make a fruit of the spirit salad. So we are. That's what oh, we're man. Doing Take note, man. I might want to use that in a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, worship team. Give them a great big hand. They do. 
You really need to clap for him this morning because half these songs I was struggling with. Huh. So yeah. they're pretty good. They, they do a good job. And so we, I'm thankful for them. And uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Huh. We just have a lot going this morning, don't we? Huh. It was crazy. I've been, I've been working on what my preparation for this morning for a couple of weeks, trying to gather inf- information here and there. And then last night, Kathy and I were sitting up here. We go over all of our worship, and, and I just kind of made, um, by the way, matter of fact, uh, next week I want to sing our song, you know, our patriotic song that we sing every year and, and like to sing some songs and just kind of get that in your mind. And she said, she looked at me real funny, and that's tomorrow. And I thought, how did, it, how did I lose this Sunday and all this? But uh, So last night I went home and finished my sermon that I've been working on diligently. The good news is next week we're pretty much taken care of. Tonight I'm going to uh, talk, I'm going to start my series on Acts, the book of Acts. And I've got 39 little lessons for us on the book of Acts leading up. And I I purposely saved our announcements. I have two announcements. Number one, Dave Satterfield will be with us the first week in October. And and we've been talking back and forth, conversing. In fact, last week he texted me, and I'm in grubbies. We're getting ready to mow the lawn, right? And so he says, hey, let's meet for coffee this morning at 10. Okay, well, I guess I could get out there early and get my part of it. And Melissa pretty much mows it, but we told her it's so dry right now that we don't have to mow it. To, we just mowed around the church. And so I got out there and I took a break to get a drink and go inside, use the restroom. And uh, I looked down at my phone and there was a message. He said, Can we change it to nine? Now it's 8 30 at the moment. And I said, you got me in grubbies, buddy. And so we, we met, and we, he's, he's excited to be with He's going to come probably uh, towards uh, the middle of August and just talk to you about that week. Now, I've never had evangelists do that to me before. Uh, of course, you have to understand two things. He lives in this area, and he doesn't have to you know, travel many miles to get here. And number two, he's, he's a good friend. He's a personal friend. We've known each other, and we traveled at headquarters for years. And he's, he's a man of God, and I, I love David. Uh, and his wife, Jerry, will be with him, and we're going to have a great time. Uh, and he said, I want you to start reading through the book of Acts. Just You do that, and I'll do that, and we'll, we'll pray about it. And then I threw it out to you, and, and some of you were doing it. In fact, some of you told me that you're further on than, than Kathy and I. I think we crossed over the 13th chapter, and, uh, and we're excited about that. We, 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 we sit there and we talk about it. We, we read the, and we just talk for quite a while. And, and there's so many wonderful things. So you really could read through the book of Acts a couple times before October. And it would be great. And if you want to take a couple days on one chapter, that's okay. Because we're prepping ourselves for what God is going to do in October. We're, we're setting a foundation for what God is going to do in our life. I really believe that. This year... I really believe God is going to empower us by the Spirit of God. And, and I think David is just one of those blessings that we'll have. And so, uh, anyway, so start doing that. And then don't forget this Friday, Terry McCallum will be with us. I'm so excited. I just, from the minute he steps up to the piano to the minute we close the service down, it'll be a worship experience. Chuck put that on the sign, and that's exactly what it's going to be. So, come, you know, when, when, when we come to church, not just uh, for a special thing like with Terry, but, but when we come to church, what do you expect when you walk through the door? Are you expecting God to do something in your life? If you are, you won't be disappointed. But if you come in thinking, well, I wonder if the pastor's going to be on today with his sermon, he won't be. No matter how good I'll do that morning, it won't be good enough. But if you come through the door saying, I bet pastor's got a dynamic sermon, it will be. Do you believe that? Some of you are kind of like one eye closed and tilting your head like, "Mm, I don't know. (laughs) Trust me, worship is always better when we come expecting. 
The word is always better when we come expecting. Altar times are always better when we expect God to meet us and to talk to us and, and, and to head on, eyeball to eyeball. Unfortunately, uh, this isn't part of my sermon yet. <laughs> uh, but we're starting right now. I, I, I chose this morning Soaring with Eagles. But as I was doing research on, on our, how America was founded, there's a lot of things uh, that they're trying to take out of history right now. And they're trying to remove the very fact that our Constitution was made by men of God. Now, be careful with this and how you take this, but they weren't just religious leaders. Our world today uses religion. Oh my goodness, that encompasses every kind of thing, including a cult under the term religion. They weren't just religious men. They were Christian men. And they were men that had a burden for a country that would be fashioned after God. And some of the things I'm going to share with you, you might have learned in a history class. It kind of jarred some of my memory. But some of the things I'm going to share with you, I had never heard in school before. I'd never heard anybody talk about. In fact, I, 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 it's going to be a little different this morning. I'm going to share some things about our country and how it was founded with you before I, I get into the meat of the message. Uh, first of all, the stripes represent the 13 colonies of the stars, uh, which eventually was 50 states of the Union, which we now have more than that. The colors of the flag are symbolic as well. In, in 1782, the Congress of the United Articles of Confederation, excuse me, Confederation chose the colors for the great seal. Now, do you know what a seal is? How many know what a seal is? First one to stand me and, and tell me what a seal is, I have a prize for you. What is the seal of the United States? What is the official seal for in the United States? It's the seal of every, yeah, exactly right. One nation under God. That's exactly, you know what? You get a box of Krispy Kremes. So come on up here. You can, in fact, you did so well, you can get another box going out the door. And by the way, take those home with you. I don't need them. The official seal that any time any document is signed by the president or Congress, the seal goes on it saying, this is official. And it started that day in 1782. Anybody remember that? I just thought. That. The three colors represent something very dynamic. The red symbolizes the hardiness and valor of our country. That we're, we're strong, we're hardy, we're, our dependence is on God. The red, believe it or not, the reason they chose Lev, it stood for the blood of Jesus. And they put that into the original, that, that was put in, and when they wrote the Constitution of the United States, and then they decided the three colors of the flag, it was all because of the blood of Jesus. Wow. That we are free under God. Do you hear that too much on the news? You don't hear that too much, but you can find it. Google it. It's there. In fact, I encourage you to go home and, and find out. I, I wish I had time to share with you everything I found. I, we would be here till 2 o'clock. Is that all right with everybody? All right. Well, we wouldn't beat the Baptist till lunch if we did that. White symbolizes the purity and innocence that we were to be a country like Jesus that was pure and innocent. He was the sacrifice, the innocent sacrifice. He had no sin. And the white represented the purity that we should have as Americans. That's powerful. That, that's who we are. That's our DNA as Americans. We don't hear that too much anymore. But we need to understand the founding fathers were men of God who implanted all this. It stemmed from these things. The blue represents vigilance. 
perseverance and justice, that we are to be vigilant as Americans. We are to be vigilant as citizens of this country, that we treat it with respect, that we love the flag, that we love what it stands for. And then, of course, you know, Christ had vigilance, and he's a, a God of justice. He is a God who does right. He does well, and he serves. The red states and the blue states refer to the U.S. Senate's. The Republican Party is the red, the Democrats are the blue. The stars and stripes embodies the very qualities that make a nation great. Here they are. Liberty, justice, freedom, love of country, and national purpose. Boy, does that parallel with our walk with God or not? Were they, were they men of God? Were they men of vision? I believe they were. I believe they were. I really do. The flag uh, was such a sacred thing to them. It, it was all these colors that represented the spiritual part of it. It was never to touch the ground. That's one of the stipulations. It's carried horizontally, or uh, you weren't to put anything on it like letters or logos or designs of any kind. It's, sta it's a standalone emblem of who we are. And as believers, we are not to put anything on us <laughs> but who we are in Christ. Isn't that interesting? Saluting the flag or a fellow officer is a gesture of respect, a sign of comradeship among the military personnel. And according to the statue, or the salute is a uniform gesture to each other. And if any ranking officer salutes another, he is required to return the salute to that officer, whether he is a general all the way down to a private. That says the respect is even. The rank is different, but the respect is across the board. Jesus, God, is no respecter of person. Isn't this interesting? This is incorporated in, in how they wrote it and, and how they put it together. And somehow those kind of documents have disappeared. For a civilian, placing your hand over your heart is considered the same as a military salute. So at a game or a, or a rodeo, when you stand and you put your hand over your heart as they sing the national anthem or pledge the allegiance, it's the same as saluting the flag. It's the same as a military position. Today's thoughts, the bald eagle has been the national bird of the United States since 1782. It represents honesty, truth, majesty, strength, courage, wisdom, power, and freedom. Wow. How do we get all these things? Hang on, I'll tell you in just a minute. Glad you asked. Our forefathers felt as they roamed the sky as believed to have a special connection to God. For an eagle is the highest flying bird in the world. It can fly up to two and a half miles high. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I have a hard time walking a hundred yards, let alone two and a half miles high. Isn't that interesting? In the descriptions we read about God bringing his people out of Egypt and into Canaan as on the wings of eagles. It's found in Deuteronomy 32, 11. The eagle represents God in his loving care towards Israel. Didn't know all that was incorporated in, did you? These men <laughs> had a vision for our country to be a godly country. I'm going to talk to you about the American Eagle today and how it parallels and why they picked the Eagle. And these are some of the things I didn't know all these things. Famous statements that you've heard over the years, some of them are more recent. How about let's make America great again? Have you ever heard that before? How about bring us back to the values of our founding fathers? Have you heard that recently? You're hearing that a lot. And you know, I've been, we've been reading uh, articles how state by state, they're taking back 
things that have been dissolved and pushed away, they're reinstating. Why? Is because the Christian community is beginning to stand up and say, no more. Amen. We are founded by men of God, and we will stay on that foundation of Jesus Christ and God our Lord. How about this statement? Have you ever heard this one? Give me liberty or give me death. <laughs> heard that maybe once or twice. And the very committee who drafted this U.S. Declaration of Independence put in their life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. On the lighter side, there's another one I want to share with you. It says, it's hard to soar with eagles when you work with turkeys. <laughs> oh. The bald eagle is a symbol of pride. This bird selected above all other birds. The founding fathers found great parallel with the eagle to us as Christians or believers who have been born again. Isn't that interesting? Our strength as a nation was comparable to the mighty eagle in its majestic, stately, and magnificent ways. The, I'm reading you quotes out of the original document, not the actual document that they put and they all signed, but this is their, their rough draft of it, I guess, of why they wrote it and why they put what they put into it, because it stems from these very things I'm sharing with you. That our strength as a nation was comparable to the Maigu, it was, wow, his magnificent ways. <laughs> Eagles have always been looked at as having or showing themselves beautiful or dignity. The attributes as Americans that we should have as well. I'm going to share with you five of, there, there's many points, but I'm going to just share with you the five that, I, that stood out to me as I was doing this. Re I had fun researching this. I, I, I found out things I did not know. But I remember as a kid, when I was a teenager, we used to float down the Rogue River in, in inner tubes. And there was a part of the river that had cliffs, high cliffs. And uh, they were dangerous and jagged. And, and only mountain climbers really went to that. They would, mountain climbers would actually come and practice on those. And, and they would do that over and over, get experience so they could take on bigger things. And on the side, as we'd float down parts of the year, you would see eagle nests everywhere. And these great big magnificent birds would, would fly to their nest and take care of their young. And many times we would just kind of pull ourselves into the side and just sit there laying in our inner tubes and just looking up and, and just watching these magnificent birds. And as a kid, I was, you know, uh, I, I got to tell you, my, my wife made fun of me Friday night. I just got to tell you. I'm sitting there. I, I was so caught up with the performance that we were watching. I, I, I have this thing that sometimes I just kind of, I just, I, I just love music and I love you know, all this stuff, and they were playing the songs that I grew up on. She grew up on an Indian reservation. They didn't have all those wonderful songs that I did. And I was just listening, just enjoying it, and she snapped a picture of it, and she showed it to me, and I thought, oh. I just kind of, I mean, I just was caught up with it. I do that. I, I get in awe, and we should be in awe of who we are as Americans and Christians. We should be at awe at our country. We can pick our country apart. We can, we can find things that are negative, but let me tell you, there are a lot of positive things going across our nation right now where men and women are standing up for the cause of Christ. Young people are going into politics to make a difference. And let me tell you, if you know of any of them, we, we have a kid that was in my kid's church. He was like, huh, <laughs> the McBride kids. You know, you look at them, but that kid... Jonathan was that age when he came into our kids' church, and now he, he's in his 40s, and, and he, he's running for the House of Representatives for the state of Texas. And every once in a while, uh, I call him or I text him or I, on Facebook. I just give him an encouraging word, and say, John, I'm praying for you. We need to pray for those who stand for Christian values. We need to pray for them. Five facts about eagles. Are you ready? Everybody buckled up? First, eagles fly alone in a high altitude, and they do not mix with sparrows or smaller birds, not even geese. <laughs> a 
Psalms 1.1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. An eagle is utopia of a standard. And he will not fly with birds who can't fly his height. He stays on that. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It's okay, I can handle the competition. Three things that this passage tells us that we should take note of as believers. First of all, huh, we are not affected by the worldly wisdom. We don't fly by the world. We fly by God's principles, just as our founding fathers did. We fly by those things. Second of all, we go down the path of righteousness. We stand up for what's right. And last, we express or speak to others uh, in a, a way that represents Christ and never demeaning or scornful. Wow. We don't sit in the seat of scoffers. We sit right next to the throne of God. Good thoughts, aren't they? These are all thoughts from our forefathers. <laughs> I'd like to tell you this is all original. I, I went through and found a few things, a few scriptures on my own. But let me tell you, I'm, I'm taking this right out of some of the documents that these men formed before they wrote the Declaration of Independence. These are their thoughts that, that pulled it together because I, I, I dare say that any one of you, that, that if you would do the research that I was doing, you would spend hours finding these documents and reading them, and, and they're not just a couple of pages, they're pages. Wow, it, it's, 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 it's inspiring. Second, eagles have strong vision. They can focus up to two miles in the air. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a hard time seeing across the street. <laughs> Once in a while, I look over there in Dianetics, and I focus on that sign. Two miles away? Wow, that, that's a, what, what, a, what a folk. It's no wonder they're, they're so quick and powerful to get their prey because they spot them and they plot their course and they fly with the wind and they pick out their prey in seconds and their prey never, ever knows until it's in their claws that they're invited to dinner that night. <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish, but happy is he who keeps the teaching. We need to have a vision for what God can do in our life, not only as Americans, but as Christians, as believers, as the body of Christ. Do you have a vision for what God wants in your life? Can you see two miles away? Can you look ahead and say, this is where I'm going? <laughs> Proverbs 16, 2 all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the Spirit. A lot of times we think, hey, we're good, but it's the Lord. We're in the balances in our life. Matthew 20, 33, they said to him, Lord, let our eyes be opened. I pray that our eyes are open to what God wants to do in us, through us, with us. Third, eagles do not eat dead things. Say, how do they eat something? Most of their prey are still alive when they're chowing down. I'm sorry, I know some of you girls will say, ooh, that's kind of squeamish. <laughs> Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Zechariah 10.12, I will make them strong in the Lord, and they will go to and fro in his name, saith the Lord. Lamentations 3.23 says this, It is a of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions do not fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. 
The reason an eagle does that is because that's how they stay healthy. Vultures eat dead meat that's been there for a week. They're not bothered by the maggots. Sorry about that. Some of you are not too hungry for lunch right now. They're not, they're not bothered by rotten meat. Eagles, their system is built. They have to have fresh meat daily. You'll never see an eagle swoop down to a, to a deer on the side of the road and feast because their body requires fresh meat. We require a freshness every day. They are every morning. Great is your faithfulness. <laughs> Dead animals begin decaying process in a few hours and become unhealthy for them. On the lighter side again, roadkill is legal in Tennessee. Just thought I'd tell you that. <laughs> the difference between vultures and eagles. Eagles pick their prey, vultures find their prey dead. Eagles want fresh and uncontaminated diets. Interesting. Vultures are not picky. Eagles feast on the best. Vultures feast on the worst. As believers, we are refreshed daily. I want a feast on the best. I want something that's healthy for me. An eagle will not go after anything that has been dead before it gets there. Fourth, an eagle is the only bird that loves the storm. He loves the storm. It uses the strong, its strong wings to gain altitude and speed in the storm. Deuteronomy 21 says, When you go out to battle against your enemies and see horses, chariots, and a people that outnumber you, do not be what? Afraid of them. For what? The Lord your God is with you who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Wow. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do what? All things. Because of Christ who strengthens me. 2 Timothy 4.5 says, But be self-controlled in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. And what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Eagles use the adversary, the winds, the storms to soar and to strengthen their wings. The wind's current storms become their driving force to soar higher, stronger, more powerful. It will test itself against the elements and learn how to control the air currents and turbulence to gain better agility in the middle of a storm. In fact, some records have showed eagles even flying around a hurricane because it's strengthening their wings and their power. Isn't that interesting? They know their strengths and they will not be overconfident of their abilities. Very seldom does an eagle die because they flew into a storm it couldn't handle. They push themselves to be greater, stronger, and skilled. They have a healthy fear of the elements but have a desire to beat the odds. Oh, I love that. In Christ, we beat the odds. Just this morning you heard a testimony. In the world, we beat the odds. To God, it, it's commonplace. I pray that we start thinking and seeing as God sees with His vision because we see uh, from right here, He sees from there to there where we've been and where we're going. It's hard for us to see where we're going. It's a step of faith every day. And our, our strength. <laughs> they have a healthy fear of the elements, but they want to beat the odds. They're not afraid. Last but not least, the eagle test before it trusts. <laughs> I thought this was interesting. That's why I put it last. It is considered one of the wisest animals of all God's creation. <laughs> they test the wind currents before they fly. They want to make sure. 
<laughs> they know their abilities, and they know the danger of making an attempt to fly in adverse conditions. And they're careful to make the right decision. Deuteronomy 8.2 You must remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to prove you. <laughs> wow. To know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. John 4, 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Today we have to test the spirits. There's a lot of false prophets. And we have to make sure it lines up with the word. If it lines up with the word, we're great. If not, we better move away from it. Romans 12, 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may what? Prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12, 1. I urge you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your what? God doesn't ask us to do anything unreasonable. And if he asks us to go beyond what we're used to, he's right there with us. God is proven. I, I used to love the, the commercials. I think it was Toyota that they would get a guy and he's just, you know, and they'd say, Toyota, they're proven. Zero to 60 and five. Six. Remember that advertisement? Oh my goodness. My sister used to hate that. She said, just because it can do zero to 60 in five seconds doesn't mean you have to do it. <laughs> I want to soar with eagles. No chicken coops. They took an experiment. In fact, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I skipped it purposely because I want to go back to it. Uh... It, it's kind of interesting. It's called, uh, there, there's an article called Eagles in Chicken Coop. And it, and it was written by Brad McClendon, and he had a vision of this. And then he found out that what his vision was, was exactly like what was found out in some experiments that these, this, I thought this was really funny. Uh, several veterinary doctors and fowl <laughs> or poultry researchers, fowl researchers, they're fowl. Well, those guys are fowl, you know. These bird technologists all discovered two things. The very same thing that Brad McClinton saw in his vision. What happens when you place an eagle in a chicken coop? They begin pecking one another and scratching the ground looking for food. First they forget their majestic birds and they begin acting like chickens. They begin pecking one another. The fence around them teaches them that they can't fly. They lose their desire to fly. The fence around them becomes an illusion of fear and being trapped. They feel trapped when all along they can fly above the coop. They mentally become a chicken <laughs> and not the great bird they could be. And last but not least, he compared the eagle to a modern day Christian who are trapped in a chicken coop and do not know who they are and who their potential, what their potential is. I almost cried when I read that. The ex experiment was made by these uh, doctors and, and researchers with eagles, turkeys, and other birds, such as birds of prey. All birds, when they put in a chicken coop, become a chicken. Huh. And the two things they discovered, first, birds, especially eagles, once adapted to the habits of chicken. Now, catch this, church. 
This is, we're wrapping up this, this today. First, birds, especially eagles, once adapted to the habits of chickens, have a hard time becoming the creatures they were meant to be. After the experiment, and they were released into the wild, they didn't make it because of the habits they picked up from the chicken coop. Second, their lifespan is shorter and they're unhealthy. They're physically unfit. <laughs> wow. Church, we need to take note that we're not in a chicken coop. We're like the eagles. Our founding fathers developed all this so that we could live in freedom, so we could live and enjoy liberty, so we could, we could have an enterprise around us that's exciting. And the environment, we have to guard that. And it starts with me. It starts with you. It's one eagle in a chicken coop. And you know what? I, when I read that, I, I, I thought, how cruel. How could you possibly put an eagle in the surrounding for a year and then turn it loose without trying to train it or they just turned it loose because they wanted the stats of what happened to it and they, they put the bands on them and they could track them and they found that they didn't live more than another year. And they were unhealthy. They, they were spindly. They didn't find a mate for life. You know, eagles find mates for life. And when that mate dies, they're, they're, they, there is no second mate. They, they love that's their mate. And, and, and it's hard for them to find another mate. They can, and sometimes they do, but it's, it's, very, it's a struggle. They're committed to each other. And I thought, how cruel that you take a beautiful, majestic animal. And, and I remember Dave Williams at the Crow's Nest when I went to visit. They had an eagle there. And uh, I said, what's the deal with the eagle? I mean, you know, it, it looked like it was chained, but it wasn't. They had a band around it. And, it looked like, and he said, that eagle is free to leave any time he wants to. His family is right around the corner in the trees. He raises a family every year with his mate. But the eagle loves to come and show the kids who he is. And I said, really? I said, I wish I could stay and see the show. He said, oh, it's magnificent. He said, he'll fly and he'll come and land on my arm. This great big eagle that could just make havoc of your face. He trusts the eagle and the eagle trusts him and, and he'll fly. And, and I wish I could have seen this show. He had the hawks that did all that and all the things, but the eagle actually flies and, and he'll feed it and he'll pet it. They're friends. Eagles make friends with humans. That's an interesting characteristic. And they're majestic. I don't want to live my life in a chicken coop. I want my freedom. I want everything God has for me to be. Wow. Interesting. This is what our, our country was founded on. Godly principles. Principles that will be strong and, and morally right. And, and principles we can sink our teeth into and get get a hold of it and make it part of our life. Here's how I want to end today. I want to pray for our nation. I want to pray for our country. I know I, I always challenge you to come down to the front, and, and I still want to do that if, uh, as we conclude the service. But I, I'm, I'm believing that there's maybe three or four or five of you that even as I'm talking, something is resonating in you, and God has given you a prayer for us to hear because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but it also comes by hearing somebody else. The testimony you heard today makes us determined that we're going to keep praying for people because look what it did for Carson. We prayed for him. God is making a way for him. God will always make a way for us. Sometimes we got to pray it through. The powerful, effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We need to pray for our country. We need to pray that God will return us back. As one of the quotes I told you, let's go back to the days where our founding fathers established this country under God. And we need to pray. 
I said this the other day, and I'll say it again. And, and some people don't like it, but I, I'm, I'm going to tell you anyway. I pray for our president. I pray that he will have a Damascus Road experience. I mean, look at Saul. Killing, maiming, prison, all the Christians of his time. And when he met Jesus, he became one of them. He became what he was persecuting. And he died for the same cause that he killed others for. That's powerful. So let's pray. And, and, so, and, and you know, I, this is not a pressure, but I, I really believe some of you God is speaking to your heart even right now. Uh, we, we, Ryler had my microphone down there. I'm going to use Gary's mic. Uh, Gary, can I impose upon you? I don't know. You turn this on more and off, off than I do. But uh, as we dismissed this morning, and, you, and I know some of you are not going to like this, but I'm going to ask you to come up front and pray into the mic so that people out there, we have somewhere around 140 to 160 people who listen to our Facebook and, and YouTube on a monthly basis. They need to hear your prayers too. They need to hear your prayers too. So if you feel led to pray, I want you to come up and just, and Gary will hand you the mic, and you pray your heart. That's all I ask you to do. You don't have to pray for an hour. You can pray for 30 seconds. Pray one sentence. Pray a paragraph. Whatever God has laid on your heart to pray, you pray. That's it. That's it. Isn't that pretty easy criteria? That's all I expect is you, you to pray what's on your heart. Are you ready? Are you ready, church? Some of you are sitting back now. I'm going to say this one, and then we're going to open, open the floor for you to come. Some of you are sitting back and say, oh, I don't want to do this. If God's put it on your heart, it's time to step up and do what God's put on your heart. If he hasn't put it on your heart, just stay right where you are. Pretty easy, huh? And we're going to start right now. Who, who's the first one to step up and say, I want to pray for our country. I want to pray for God to reign in our country. We sang about it this morning, all about it this morning. Now let's pray about it. Come on, I just, I won't beg you, but I, I just believe some of you, God is speaking to your heart to do it. And if he's speaking to your heart, be obedient, follow through. for your goodness and your mercy, how you watch out over us and care for us. Thank you for the healings that we've seen in our church, dear Lord. The prayers go up for people and we see the signs and the wonders, dear Lord, from you. You love your children so much. You have so much that you want to give us. If we would just ask sometimes yes. Yes. We just don't ask. Yes. Help us with that, Lord. Help us to draw closer to you. To seek your face, dear Heavenly Father. I love you so much, Lord. I love your people. I love being around the people in our church. We fellowship and we love one another. I pray that you would bless each and every one of them, Lord, in a mighty way. This year, dear Heavenly Father, help us to hold our heads up high and, and to stand up for what's right, Lord. We know what's right. Yes. If the church and the Christians don't stand up for what's right, who will? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I love Israel. Dear Lord, we're supposed to pray for Israel. Yes. God's yes. chosen people. We love them, Lord. We love you and we thank you. And I pray that you, God, bless America. 
God bless our leaders. Dear Lord, put the right ones in, dear Heavenly Father, that believe in you and that will do what you would have them to do. Seek your face. Listen to that small voice that's inside them. Dear Heavenly Father, and we'll give you praise, dear Lord. We give you all the praise and the glory because you deserve it. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Someone else. Great prayer, Susie. Thank you for being obedient. Thank you. Someone else this morning. Don't miss a blessing, not only for you to receive, but for you to give. easy to come up and do this but God will, will reward you God will bless you Lord Jesus this country was founded on faith and if it wasn't for the faith of our veterans to do what they've done over the years this country would not be free. We wouldn't have the freedoms we have today without them. So, Lord, we just ask that you would bless all the veterans. Yes. Be with our armed services today, Lord, as they go around yes. the world to keep us safe, to help others gain their freedom. Because, Lord, without you, they are nothing. But with you, they are everything. I have a son that was in Navy. The first thing he did before he went to the Gulf of War was he gave his life to you so that you would have a hedge of protection around him. So, Lord, just thank you for the blessings of our military's people to, to do what they've done, to sacrifice their lives so we could have the freedom that we have. And, Lord, this country is lost and hurting, and we know you can bring it back from the brink. So, Lord, we just come to you and ask that you would bless this country again like you used to, Lead us and be with us in our everyday walks of life to help guide and strengthen us. We ask this in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. There's someone else this morning. Good prayers. Good prayers. God, I thank you. First of all, as we pray for our country, I first of all thank you for our founding fathers who were godly men. And Lord, help us to continue to build on their foundation. Help us to stand up and do individually what we know is right. No matter what anyone else does, God, we need to stand for righteousness. We need to stand for justice. We need to stand for truth. God, it's all wrapped up in, into the Constitution and into the history of, of who we are. And second of all, we thank you for who we are. We are your children. We are, we are offspring of the Most High. We are men and women of God. So, Lord, help us to be just like that eagle, just to live up to who we are and to be everything that you have us to be. And I thank you for it. Go with us as we go our way. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be together and to sing songs of patriotism and songs that, that speak of our, our country and our love for our country and our love for you. So be with us in your precious name. Amen and amen. Praise God.